NBC News exclusively reports both from me and Carol Lee. The special counsel is asking witnesses pointed questions about whether Donald Trump himself was aware that Democratic emails had been stolen before the public knew about it and whether he was involved in their strategic public release, according to multiple people familiar with the probe. The line of questioning includes this moment in 2016, a press conference in the middle of the Democratic National Convention where Donald Trump made a plea to Russia. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Questions like, why did the then candidate ask that? Did somebody tell him to? Was it scripted? Was Donald Trump trying to give himself cover for what he already knew was about to come? Investigators also want to know if he knew that Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, would be targeted later. NBC News has reached out to the White House and the president's legal team. We'll have their response in just a moment. Witnesses tell us Trump's longtime confident, confidant, Roger Stone, appears to be a key focus. Investigators have asked about Stone's contacts with WikiLeaks during the campaign and if he's ever met with the group's founder, Julian Assange. One witness tells us they wanted to see if there was a scheme. Was Stone working on the side for Trump after he officially left the campaign? That witness felt they were trying to figure out if the WikiLeaks release was a big plot. Investigators were interested in statements Stone made in the lead up to the election, specifically this tweet right here from August 21st, 2016, where Stone said it would it will soon be Podesta's time in the barrel. WikiLeaks released Podesta's emails a little over a month later on October 7th, hours after the Access Hollywood tape dropped. In a statement, Stone tells NBC News, I never discussed WikiLeaks, Assange, or the Hillary disclosures with candidate Trump before, during, or after the election. I have no idea what he knew about them, from who or when, and I have never met Assange. Those WikiLeaks emails, along with others stolen from the DNC over the summer, proved invaluable to Donald Trump as he tried to distract from his own scandals and convince voters Hillary Clinton was not fit for office. Well, I love reading those WikiLeaks. Did you see another one? Another one came in today. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. Out today, WikiLeaks just came out with a new one. Just, just came out. WikiLeaks. Of course, you didn't know that there was a thing called WikiLeaks, right? They got it all down, folks. WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Boy, does he love those WikiLeaks. So our big question today is probably the same as Robert Mueller's. What did Donald Trump know and when did he know it? First, let's get to our reporters. NBC's Hallie Jackson is at the White House. Ashley Parker is a White House reporter for The Washington Post and an MSNBC political analyst. Jonathan Lemire is a White House reporter for the Associated Press and an MSNBC political analyst. And NBC's Carol Lee, who helped break this story, joins me as well. Carol, let's start with you. This is pretty significant because this is showing that the special counsel um, is not just investigating obstruction. They are investigating whether or not the president of the United States himself coordinated in some way about these emails during the election while he was still a candidate. Right, which we all tend to forget but sometimes, but is the heart of this investigation. Was there any collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia? And how far up would that go, should it exist? This is sort of the first instance where we've gotten a real window into the kinds of questions that Mueller's team wants answered when it comes to the president, specifically involving the campaign, and how the president's own public words, either, you know, whether it's on Twitter or you know, his press conference that you were at in, in 2016 are being scrutinized uh, in ways that, you know, some of us have have already asked, you know, questions about why, what did he mean by that? And, you know, his his spokesperson said at the time said that he was joking. But, you know, we've also, the, the connection between the president and Roger Stone, you know, there's a lot of questions that are being asked, as you know, about, you know, when they, you know, how often they communicated, the circumstances around his firing or departure from the campaign. 
campaign. Uh, and so this is, uh, you know, and the WikiLeaks piece of this investigation specifically has not been something that we've seen um, Mueller address publicly in the way we saw him address the social media aspect of it uh, recently. It's also important to note that so far we haven't seen any indictments whatsoever, any real news coming from the special counsel's office directly about what happened with the DNC hacks, uh, the stolen emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign as well. We also haven't heard anything about the meeting that Donald Trump Jr. had in Trump Tower. These are those big moments, those big questions yeah. from 2016 that we haven't heard a word from the special counsel uh, his office about at least not yet. I want to take a trip, a brief trip down memory lane and talk about that news conference where, you know, Sean Spicer later tried to say that the president was joking. The vice president tried to say that the president was joking as well when he was asking Russia to look into those emails, find those missing emails. I followed up almost immediately after that and asked him basically if he was serious. Here's what he said. Unfortunately, we don't have that. Anyway, I asked him uh, if it gave him any pause. He said it did not give him any pause. Hallie Jackson, uh, the White House doesn't generally respond to anything regarding the special counsel, right. uh, but this is a big blow to what they've been saying, which is that the, the president himself was including it all. He's not being investigated for that and that this is a big, big witch hunt. Yeah, the, the president as recently as yesterday, Katie, as you know, called this a witch hunt as he has done so many times before, tweeting that online. We have reached out based on your and Carol's reporting to the, to the president's outside attorney, to the president's internal attorney here at the White House as well, asking a long list of questions related to not just some of the threads that you guys have revealed, but also some of the president's actions prior to the transition, back when he was still a candidate. John Dow, the president's outside attorney, is now telling us that we do not comment on any kind of communications involving the special counsel. When pressed for more, uh, Dow respectfully declined to answer any more of those questions. We would have asked uh, Sarah Sanders or the, the press team at the briefing today, but as Kristen Welker noted at the top of your program, that is not happening because the president is holding an extended meeting with lawmakers to talk specifically about school safety. I can also tell you that our colleague Julia Ainsley has reached out to the office of the special counsel who is not commenting. That is not not surprising, given that it is extremely rare for their office to make remarks or to make comments on any of the reporting related to the special counsel investigation. Katie. Ashley, let's talk a little bit about Roger Stone. He tells us that he has not been interviewed by the special counsel, at least not yet, but he was fired back or quit, depending on who you believe, the Trump campaign or Roger Stone himself, uh, back in August of 2015. That's pretty early on. But Stone has been a longtime confidant uh, of Trump's. The questions of whether or not he was still around were, were popping up during the campaign. They, they certainly were. And, you know, even into this White House, I understand that Roger Stone and President Trump and Roger Stone and then candidate Trump spoke on the phone fairly frequently. Now, his aides would often tell you, you know, Roger Stone doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't speak on behalf of us. And he certainly doesn't speak on behalf of the White House. But he is someone who, in moments, is talking to the president and does have an awareness of what the president is is thinking and feeling and, and wants to communicate and is also sort of planting bugs in the president's ear about things he should be doing. Roger Stone, as you know, has been one of the biggest proponents that President Trump uh, should be sort of actively fighting back against the Mueller probe and should not be participating. Um, so you're right, he is in contact. Um, and the, the Atlantic, Jonathan, is reporting this week that Roger Stone did have direct uh, Twitter messages with WikiLeaks. Yeah, there's, they even posted some screenshots that suggest there's some sort of exchange between Stone and WikiLeaks. Stone has said that he sort of cut it off, that there wasn't mm -hmm. anything incriminating or nefarious about the exchange. But let's remember who Roger Stone is. I mean, he's sort of one of the ultimate political dirty tricksters. Yeah. You, know, you know, this is the man who has a tattoo of Richard Nixon on his back. And that has, Which is true for all, these, for all, for all of that, you that who is might not be an expression. that. That, <laughs> that, is, that is actually true. Yeah, that is not a figure of speech. He actually has a tattoo of Richard Nixon <laughs> on his back. Uh, and that he is someone who periodically has come up through the Republican circles. We know he was involved during the George W. H. W. Bush, George w. Bush recount in 2000 and other times since where he has been involved when you know things were perhaps needed to be a little rough along the edges for conservative movements. He's been a longtime confidant of Donald Trump back when he was a businessman and then a potential political candidate. He was involved in the early days of the campaign before departing under somewhat 
contested circumstances. Uh, but we do know. Ashley is absolutely right. We know that he still does talk to the president and talks to people in the president's world from time to time, uh, and that he has indeed been agitating to the president should really fight back on the special counsel, a marked contrast from the public posture of the president's outside legal team, which says we should be playing nice. Uh, Carol, there's also the, the fact that we know that George Papadopoulos has said, um, has pled guilty uh, to the special counsel, and that was because he was talking about emails that Russia had with an Australian diplomat while he was in London. Yeah, I mean, that's just another dimension. And, you know, it, because he's cooperating, obviously Robert Mueller's team is going to learn more about how the how he came to know that, who else knew that in the campaign, if yeah. anybody, and, and those sorts so of questions. So at least questions. somebody on the campaign knew about it. Or that's seemed to know that's about certainly it where his value yeah. comes in as a cooperating witness. Uh, you know, some of the other things that we've learned in our reporting about what questions that are being asked about the president is his positions on Russia. Yeah. You know, why did he take certain positions when he was perhaps being advised to take some a harder line? You know, what did he ever meet with Vladimir Putin? Things like like that, and also uh, Paul Manafort, you know his connections with Roger Stone, and and specifically why Paul Manafort would work for free. You know everyone talks about oh this person's not taking any salary, they're working for free, isn't that so nice? But you know why there could the also be do another that? reason for doing that. Yeah. You know which would be if you had more nefarious goals by working for. A why would you work for a billionaire for free? I think was a, a number uh, right. a number of the questions <laughs> that have been out there. Um, in terms of the other things that we have been reporting. And and we were able to get from from the the questions out of the Mueller team specifically, as you mentioned, why did Donald Trump hold the positions that he held? Was it because of uh, specific business interests he had? When it comes to Russia, why was he advocating that Vladimir Putin um, get involved in Syria and, and not care that they're getting involved in Syria uh, when it wasn't U.S. policy at the time? Why would he do that when actually a GOP primary? wasn't particularly fond of Russia. They didn't like Vladimir Putin. It wasn't a, a normal position for a Republican candidate to take. Why would Donald Trump take that position? Why would he always be so friendly to Vladimir Putin? Well, well, I'm there, not asking you. I know, I know. It sounds like I'm asking you, but those are the questions that those are the questions that have been surrounding this, and they're ones that have remained unanswered largely. I think she's lost. I think Ashley's lost our RIFB. Jonathan, go ahead. Sure. Uh, I mean, yes, the, the, the now President Trump's relationship with Russia uh, has remained puzzling throughout. We have the famous tweet from a few years ago where he suggested, wondered if Putin would be his best friend after having a beauty pageant in Moscow. There's been some suggestion that the special counsel now is is, is asking questions about when the president first decided to run for president, which would then perhaps, if this was something that was years in the works, maybe that pointed to, the questions go, did Russia have an early in with him? Um, the, you know, there time and time again that the president has sided with Russia when it was, seemed to be a politically unpopular decision. Another moment would be their convention last year, the, the Republican convention, when suddenly the Republican platform shifted to a, a you know, much more pro-Russian stance. Now, with now, Paul Manafort had been had been on board at that point. But this is another moment where it's a question of what was the motivation? Was this Manafort and the ties that he has over in uh, that part of the world, or is that something that the president himself wanted? And it also calls into question how much Robert Mueller is trying to to squeeze Paul Manafort and whether or not Paul Manafort uh, could be a potential link uh, here, the missing link in this investigation to find out what exactly was happening at that time. At the time of that news conference where he asked Russia, if you're listening, Paul Paul Manafort uh, was the the campaign chairman. He was he was in, he was in charge. He was also in charge for the convention. And while the, they were at the convention, the GOP platform was changed. It seems like a lot of the focus is starting to center on what happened in that summer. Why did Donald Trump say that about Russia? But also, who knew what about these DNC emails? Right. And one of the things I found interesting, and maybe you did too, in reporting this story, is when you hear the questions that are being asked in these interviews. They, they overlap with questions that reporters have been asking for a while publicly. And, you know, all, when we've done that, we get a lot of pushback from the president and his team saying there's nothing there. Why are you asking anything? And clearly someone, a seasoned investigator like Robert Mueller, thinks that these are legitimate questions to be asking and is in fact asking them. And it's part of this investigation. And that 
the fact that they're being asked now suggests that this is not wrapping up anytime soon. No, and, and I was talking to another person who, who had been interviewed, and they were telling me that the Mueller team knows what they are doing. These are not uh, crime scene cops trying to piece together a story. They know the room that you were in better than you know the room that you were in. Here's who you were sitting next to when you were having this conversation. Do you remember saying this? Oh, we have an entire verbatim of that conversation. They know the answers before you say them. They're not just fishing here. They're, they're pretty studied up. And it's because of exactly that is the, the White House, is, the dilemma the White House faces about whether they want President Trump to sit in a room with these investigators and actually give some sort of interview. Because I think they are concerned that the Mueller team already has the lay of the land. This is a, this is a president who, shall we say, sometimes has a shaky grasp of, on the facts. And they're afraid of what he could say, whether he perjures himself, whether he says something incriminating. Uh, and this is the debate they're having in the White House right now, whether they want to sit down with him, whether they want to try to have some sort of written testimony instead or just keep them out altogether. Jonathan Lemire, thank you very much. Carol Lee, great job. Nice to work yeah. with you. Hallie Jackson.